Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about the Pat McGrath products that I picked up from her Holiday 2020 collection. I did get the Celestial Divinity palette, which I did haul for you guys in my last haul video, but we will be talking about this. I also have the three new eyeshadow quads, so we will be swatching, talking about those, demoing those as well. And I also did pick up the new highlighter from Pat McGrath. Those are the only things I've picked up from the Holiday collection so far. She has been releasing them kind of I don't know, kind of at like in a staggered way, which I don't really understand. So I did pick up the Celestial Divinity palette first. This did arrive to me maybe a couple weeks ago, but I just got the highlight and the three new quads. She has like a bunch of like lip products that have come out that are still, I think, going to come out. She has some of those potted lip balms, which I think were just released. So I may do another um, holiday 2020 collection order, but I did want to start with these products um, and demo them for you and give you my thoughts on them. So I thought I would start with a highlighter. I um, did not go crazy and do a whole bunch of comparison swatches for this highlight because I just wanted to get this video up for you guys. So we're just going to do a quick demo of this and just kind of talk about this amazing packaging and show you a swatch of this. So this new highlighter comes in this incredibly, incredibly heavy and weighty hockey puck sized packaging. This gold finish is really Really luxurious definitely a fingerprint magnet but it is just gorgeous and this lid screws off then inside you have the highlight it's really gorgeous the color of this is called champagne gold and the full name of this is skin fetish sublime skin highlight and this looks to be like a pressed powder formula so it's very very silicone-y I don't know if you can see that in the swatch here but there's like a a certain level of thickness to this and this is quite different from her baked highlights the ones that came in her kits initially those limited edition kits that she used to do and then she came out with that highlighter trio palette those were baked and I have a feeling this is going to go on to the skin in a little bit more of like a thick opaque way where her previous baked highlights uh, went on they could definitely be built up but they kind of applied initially in a very sheer way so those are her like baked highlighters but this one is definitely a little bit different so let's go ahead and apply this so i'm going to use my sonia g sculpt 2 brush but i do have the sonia g smooth buffer brush at the ready in case i need to buff it out a little bit so let me go ahead and start with the sculpt 2 i'm just going to Dip that right into the highlight here. Oh, pretty. I feel like it applies to my cheek in like more of a champagne gold kind of way. When I swatched it, and you guys probably saw that in the swatch, it does look um, a bit peachier the way it looks in the pan here. But I feel like when I put it on my cheek, I really don't see much peachiness. I really just kind of see this a very kind of like a light gold. It's not too yellow. It's definitely much more of like a neutral kind of like champagne gold. Oh, that's very pretty. I also feel like I'm not able to pick up that much product with this brush. I'm gonna try a different one just to see. So I'm trying my BK Beauty 106 brush. This is synthetic hair. So I just wanted to give this a shot and see if this picked up the product any differently. Let's see. Nope, I think it's just that this is a very creamy, silicone, intense kind of formula, which I have found in my experience. It's just a little bit more difficult to pick up because it is so thick. But I do like this soft sheen. I have to say, this sheen is a little bit more satin than I thought this was going to be, especially after I swatched it. I thought this was going to be super highly reflective and just really kind of like wet looking and all of that, but this is actually quite nice. It's like a little bit softer, it's creamier, it's just a little bit more satin-like than I thought. I'm building this side up, I'm adding another layer, and I'm starting to see that it's like kind of getting uh, a little wet looking there. So you can definitely build up this highlight. You can kind of start with something softer. I feel like this side looks a little bit softer. I only have like maybe two layers of the highlight down, and it just has like a nice kind of soft satin sheen. And this, I probably got up to about four layers, and wow, you start to really get like this wet, like high glossy shine. Oh, how pretty. I really love products that are almost like customizable in a way where you just need to build it up and it starts to change. I really like that. So I'll leave all the details for everything down below in my description box, like pricing and all of that. So definitely check down there for details, but this is really, really pretty. All okay. right, and now for all of the eyeshadow looks that I did. This was so much fun. So I got 
all three of the new quads, and I do know that these quads are $58 each, which is cheaper than her previous quads that came out in the same packaging, those were $65. The main difference is that the formula of the eyeshadows are very different. So the three initial quads that she came out with, gosh, like months ago at this point, they all had that baked formula. Um, it's, you know, if you purchase the Mothership palettes, for most of them, aside from Decadence, they have four special shades over on the right-hand side. So those quads kind of mimicked those special shades from the big Mothership palettes. These quads all have like a pressed powder formula. So none of them have um, like the baked formula in here, which is, I think, what explains like the price difference between 65 and 58. But the packaging is essentially the same. It's basically like a mini version of the big Mothership palettes. Not quite as heavy, obviously, it's smaller, and the mirror in here is not quite as <laughs> fantabulous as the large Mothership palettes with like the beveled sides. But what I do like about these also is she's put names of the shades actually right on here instead of like a sheet, which I always lose or I put in the wrong direction or whatever so I really like that the names of the shades are on the back here so um, the first quad that I did a look with is the floor Fantasia so here's a close-up of this quad and here are some swatches of this quad and I just went uh, from left to right top to bottom so the first shade we have is so the first shade we have is Utopia next is lavender blue iridescent orchid and then lotus paradise and quickly here is the look that I did so I started with the one matte shade in the quad which is lotus paradise I basically use that as a transition shade and a shade to kind of deepen up my outer corners and then I was really excited to use the lavender blue kind of duochrome shade in there so I swept that all over my lid I tapped tapped the iridescent orchid which is the bottom left hand shade here which also has like a color shift in there I used my finger and just kind of tap that all over the lid I did find that this shade and all of the shades with this formula this kind of like chunky glitter formula did have quite a bit of fallout when I use them whether with my finger or a brush so definitely be careful with that one and then lastly I added that Hutopia which is the gold uh, satin shade. I added that to my inner corners and uh, to the tear duct area and kind of dragged that along my lower lash line just a little bit on the inner corners. So pardon these demos. I didn't complete these eye looks uh, with eyeliner, heavy eyeliner, or any sort of mascara because I just did all of these eye looks and I didn't want to irritate my eyes too much by having to remove too much eye makeup. So I pretty much just stopped it there and hopefully that gives you a good idea of the colors in here, but I did want to mention that this quad, I felt I could get a complete look out of, which I I really can't say for the other two. The other two are much deeper, and I like the fact that this one had like a light matte shade in there that was like a comfortable kind of transition shade for me, not one that I felt like I had to blend out a lot or be careful with. So for my skin tone, I personally love, love, love this Fleur Fantasia quad. This one is probably my favorite. Next up, we have Risqué Rosé. So here's a close-up of this quad, and here are some swatches. So this quad has two mattes, one uh, kind of satin shimmer, and then one kind of like chunky uh, kind of glitter shade in there. So from left to right, we have Rose Rebellion, Lavendaring, Mink Noir, and Life on Mars. So I pretty much started with Life on Mars, and I put that pretty much from like the inner corner of my eyelid all the way over, maybe like two thirds over the center of my lid. And then I took the Rose Rebellion matte shade and that's what I used to kind of deepen up the outer corners of my lids. And then I took my finger and used the Lavendaring uh, like chunky glitter shade and I just kind of tapped that all over. This definitely, again, had fallout, and I felt like when I started tapping, it was really kind of getting everywhere. I really was trying to focus it on the center of my lid, but it really ended up kind of like all over my lid. And then finally, I took the uh, Mink Noir, which is that matte brown shade, and I just kind of lightly uh, lined my eyes with that. So that is the Risqué Rose Quad, and if I had to rank these quads, this one is my least favorite. I like all of the individual shades in here, and I think they performed really well, but I don't really like the color combination too much. I don't know if I wish this one was, I don't know, maybe a little bit warmer or something. You know, like I said, it's like I like each individual shade, and each individual shade worked really well. I thought they blended really well. I have had issues with um, like her matte 
pinks and purples in the past, but this one I thought blended out really nicely. And yeah, and each shade is really beautiful. This like matte brown shade is just so practical. I love it. But there's something about this combination for some reason just isn't my favorite. And then lastly, we have Intergalactic Icon. This is the very deep dramatic quad. And here are some swatches. So again, I go from uh, left to right, top to bottom. And this particular quad does not have any mattes whatsoever. There are some um, color shifty ones in here. This one is like kind of a chunky glitter. This one is like a shimmer metallic. This one's like a shimmer satin. This one is like a color shifting one. So there is one shade in here that I know to be in a different palette in the Decadence palette, and that's this blue blood shade. So here are the swatches. So first we have Golden Polaris. Then we have Hypnotic, Blue Blood, and Divine Dahlia. So this palette is my second favorite palette. This look is just much more dramatic and just something, just something I don't feel like I'm gonna go for every single day, but it is really beautiful. And if you want a smoky look, this is a great quad for that. So what I did for the look in this palette is I used the green Divine Dahlia shade. I used that uh, pretty much all over my lid. And then I used that blue blood shade to kind of deepen up uh, my outer corners and then I use the hypnotic shade and I added that kind of like to the middle of my lid again just to kind of like highlight and change but once I got it on I realized it was a really great kind of transition shade between the green the divine dahlia and the blue blood so I kind of just like spread it down and like blended it in over that part of my lid and then I used this gold to just, you know, kind of highlight my inner corner tear duct and everything. And then I did take that blue blood and drag it along my lower lash line. So those are the three new quads. And again, I'll just reiterate, the Fleur Fantasia is my favorite. I just think it's so pretty. This color is gorgeous. And like I mentioned, I feel like I can get a complete look out of this quad. My second favorite is this Intergalactic Icon. I mean, you will definitely end up with a very dramatic, deep, smoky look, but it's beautiful. And you know, if that's what you're going for, this is such a beautiful quad for that. And then last but not least is the Risqué Rose. Again, all the individual shades I find really beautiful. I just don't like the color combination too much. So quick word about all of the quads, I really, like the formula. I didn't have any problems with any of the formulas while I was creating all of those looks. And the one thing I will mention again is that those uh, kind of chunkier glitter shades did have quite a bit of fallout. And I haven't necessarily experienced that with her other palettes. I mean, some here and there, um, but like this one in here, quite a bit of fallout. If I use like a flat shader brush and I pick up just a bit of the shadow and like press it onto my lid and kind of smear it because they are very, very creamy and smear it, I will experience the least amount of fallout, but I did still get a little bit. All right, moving on to the Celestial Divinity palette and the six on either side. So these six shades and these six shades have already been released. They were part of the Star Wars limited edition set and she had two six pan palettes. This was one and this was the other. So these six shades are the only ones that are new in here. And so the eye look that I did that I'm wearing right now focuses on these four shades and then this brown shade. I just, there wasn't like enough room for me to just kind of keep adding shadows on. So this is the only one that I didn't use, but I was really most interested in these three just to see how they look and how they wear and how they blend and all of that. So let me just show you the swatches first. And this, just like the quads, it has names on the back. And the packaging on this is cardboard packaging versus the plastic packaging of these quads. And what's different about this one is she actually put these like little ribbons here. They're to hold this uh, mirror up so that it doesn't flap all the way back. But I will say what's kind of annoying is I do use the mirror in palettes. And when I was holding this, it kept closing on me like... <laughs> <laughs> it was just kind of annoying. So I'm thinking about maybe, I don't know, cutting these or what, I don't know if I really need them. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at these swatches. So what I did was I swatched from top to bottom, left to right, since they were kind of grouped in sixes this way. So first we have Saturnalia, Venomous Void, Cosmic, Bronze Nebula, Odyssey, Smoked Amethyst, and then here are the new shades, Major Mahogany, Fuchsia Shock, Dragonfly, Lunar Champagne, Megabyte, Venusian Orchid, and now this is starting the second Star Wars six pan. Violet Void, Bronze, 
galactic gold, gold standard, electron, and corruption. So I have not gotten a chance to play with every single shade in here, but one shade that I was very curious about is this shade right here. So this is Venomous Void. It is like a matte cranberry red. And because I've had like issues with Pat McGrath's like matte kind of like purpley pink shades, I did want to check this one out. And while I found this one to be um, like a little bit smoother, not quite as dry as the other shadows of hers that I've had issues with, um, it's definitely not as dry, but I also don't find it quite as pigmented. I didn't feel like this was um, like consistent with the rest of the Pat McGrath um, matte shadows, like the matte shadows in her quads, very, very pigmented. You don't need a lot of product. This one I felt like you needed to build up a bit and it just is, and it's just kind of, I don't know, like a little bit dusty, like it kind of blends away a little bit. So that's the only shadow out of the ones that I've used in this palette that I felt like was, mm, was like a little like mediocre. Um, all the other shades I thought worked really, really well. Her shimmer shades are always really creamy. Some of them do have fallout, but you get such a wonderful like glittery payoff. And there's only three matte shades in here. This one, this one, and this one. And these two I used and I found them to be, you know, pigmented and smooth and everything. It really is only this one. So here is my eye look for this. I did use this Venusian Orchid. I put that down kind of as a starting point again to kind of deepen up my outer corner. And I brought that through my uh, crease eye socket area. And then I took Megabyte, which is like the green metallic shade. And what I did was I added that just lightly to my outer corners on top. I didn't want to get it too crazy, too deep. I just wanted to add just a little bit of dimension. And then next I used Fuchsia Shock pretty much on the remainder of my lid. So I put that like on the inner corner, I blended that out and then over that Megabyte color. And this shade definitely ended up really beautiful. I love it, but I do feel like I had to build it up quite a bit, but it is very, very pretty. And then I took some of this dragonfly shade. I blended that in between the fuchsia and the megabyte color. And then I took the major mahogany, which is the brown matte color. And I dipped my brush into that shade and the fuchsia shock and kind of combined the two and lined my eyes with that. All right, so I hope you found that helpful. Um, I think these are a lot of fun. I always have a lot of fun with Pat McGrath's shadows. She always manages to like get me out of my comfort zone. This is definitely not an eye look that I would do on the everyday, but it's just so much fun to play with her shadows. If you're really into color or if you're really just into playing with makeup, um, this palette, I. I mean, I just don't think you can go wrong. There's just so many gorgeous, fun shades in here. And when it comes to these quads, the Fleur Fantasia really is, it's just my favorite. I also find it the most unique when it comes to Pat McGrath. She really doesn't do like a lot of pastel palettes. Her palettes are either really colorful, really metallic, or really dramatic. This one, you know, I mean, it is it is incredibly unique because of all the color shifting and the textures in there, but it is like the most pastel I've seen her do. And it's, it's just really pretty. I really enjoy this one. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the pieces that I got from the Pat McGrath Holiday 2020 collection. Please let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.